very conscious as individuals and in our personal lives about being scammed, but what about business people? Are there, are there scams that business people need to be aware of? Well, there's some very the big scams. Ransomware, and that's when people in an organization click on a link and all of a sudden the CEO or people in the organization turn on their computers and there's a skull staring back at them with a ticking clock that's ticking from 90 hours right. down telling them that if they don't pay a certain amount of money, that all of the files that have just been encrypted will either be permanently encrypted or deleted. Wow. The second scam is these are the business email compromise or BEC scams. And this is where someone in the finance department would get a note from who someone they think is the CEO or the boss telling them, usually at the end of the day, at the end of the week, that money has to be wired to an unfamiliar bank or an unfamiliar account in a familiar bank, and they do it and find out later, wasn't the boss that sent him the email. Or the W-2 scam, and this is where someone in the HR department or someone who's involved with the accounting for the company gets a note from a higher up telling them that they really need the backup information for the W-2 forms. Could they please email them the information? Mm -hmm. They do, and they find out that in fact no one asked them to do it. Um, and these are extremely common, and hundreds of thousands of employees across the country have been exposed to hackers. And the reason why they want W-2 information is because as the IRS has become more sophisticated and tightened its filtering systems and is taking a closer look at the information on fraudulent tax returns, uh, thieves realize they have to get more accurate. So the way to get more accurate is to get all the information that backs up the W-2, because that's everything you need and they use that in order to file fraudulent tax returns. So let's go back to this first one, the, the skull and crossbones, where somebody's clicking on a link. And it's virtually impossible in an organization to keep people from clicking on links. You tell them, you give them their policies. Is this some, something like that, that an antiviral package, or is it coming into companies that just don't have adequate antivirus software? Well, it's, it's not only or, antivirus right. software, but it's just untrained employees employees that are clueless, companies that don't have proper backup systems to back up their data. You know, one of the ways that a company can better protect itself against ransomware is to have a backup system that is not permanently backing up. You need to have one that's disconnected for part of the time because the problem is once the ransomware gets in the system, it could actually crawl through the system, through the network, into the backup system as well. Mm -hmm. So you really want to have a separate backup that you, you, then if you become a victim of ransomware, you can literally wipe your hard drives and simply download the data that you've saved and you may only lose a very small period of time. Right. So that's, that's one of the important things that people need to do. But employee awareness training is as essential as the air we breathe. Not enough companies do it. Not enough companies spend enough time uh, getting the right kind of software in place, having an information security uh, officer in place, uh, getting the right kinds of protocols in place, having a backup plan and running through that backup plan to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And the most important thing in the world we live in is it's not about strategy, it's about culture. And Peter Drucker once said, culture eats strategy for breakfast, well, it's the same thing, is that unless you create a culture of security in your organization, from the mailroom to the boardroom, and remember that it's something that has to be nurtured on a daily basis, creating a sense of ownership for security, you're gonna be in trouble. That's huge, huge. I wanna go back to one detail. Yes. On the email, so again, trying to create that culture, is there a telltale sign that people should look out for when they get these emails, theoretically, from the CEO or from a higher up? Well, first of all, the question is, would, would a higher up actually ask me to do this? And I always say to people, the easiest thing to do is get out of your chair, walk around the corner, and ask, or pick up the phone and call the person who sent you the email and say, did you really want me to wire this money? You'd be surprised how many shocked executives there are saying, no, I didn't, or no, I didn't want you to give up the W-2 information. Can I also just check the email, like click on the You the can, prompt? well, what you, no, you don't want to click necessarily, but you do want to run your mouse over mm -hmm. the, the URL to see if the URL looks like it's different. Sometimes they're very clever. They'll create a URL that will actually look as if it's coming from within your organization, 
but there's a letter that's not right, mm -hmm. or there is something that's added. There's a word that's added as part of the address. So you need to do that, but as these folks become more clever and the email becomes more perfect, you have to be on guard. Now, one person uncovered a fraudulent email based on the fact that the boss sent the email, but at the end of the email it said, have a nice day, and the joke in the company was the boss never signs an email <laughs> with, have a nice day. Right. So you really have to pay attention to every detail. It's so important to be careful because in an organization, if you're in a position that has anything to do with data, you have a fiduciary responsibility to people in that organization. And if you make a mistake, if you click on the wrong link, if you don't verify where an email is coming from, you could expose hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of customers, employees, members, policyholders, uh, or even uh, business partners to some really miserable times. So you really need to pay attention. Everyone, everyone in an organization at every level, we have to always be on guard. Everyone, it is, a, it is a partnership and ownership. It's ownership of the security of an organization and everybody has to feel part of that. Thank you. You can get Adam's book swiped at bottomlinestore.com and do that social thing because this information is so important and as Adam said, we're all in this together. So share this video, let your friends know about Adam's good work and again, come to our site. <laughs>